Hi, my name is Bob Grunier and I'm a volunteer with the Martin Fleischmann Memorial Project. So the other day I was digging around in some of my storage boxes and I came across two things which were very interesting. Firstly, this is a halogen light bulb that I bought and uh, this in theory will have a tungsten filament. And this is 9,000 lumen, 400 watts. So obviously uh, this were to get to a really high temperature, it says here 200 degrees. So maybe this is overkill, but alongside this, I found what had been missing for so long. It was the sand that I got from this special beach that I knew of in Kerala. And it is rather heavy, this. I was struck by it at the time. In fact, I got this when I had visited India on the invite of Mahadevan Srinivasan, the sadly departed Mahadevan Srinivasan, to talk about how to work with nickel hydrogen reactors based on my experience and tips for taking that work forward. And I took myself down to Kerala and the reason was is that in around about 2013, I think it was around about 2013, I suggested that the monazite down in Kerala would probably be very good at having a range of elements that might be able to be influenced by some sort of emissions from a reactor. And I actually suggested taking a block of monazite, drilling a core into it and inserting our reactor into that. And this was a concept that I kind of brought up from time to time with the MFMP team. And when I was in India that first time and I had my first chance meeting with Suhas Ralkar, I decided when I was going down to southern Kerala, where I used to live, that I would get a sample of this. And actually, this sample is in one of the sample containers that was given to me by Suhas Ralkar. And so I'm going to measure its weight now, and uh, we'll have a look at that now. So here is our scales, and I'm going to tear it. And actually, I have another one uh, sample container that was given to me by Suhas Ralkar when I was visiting him. And uh, this is the same container that the Echo Fuel destroyed extremely quickly. And uh, if you recall, there was an image where uh, he had just went to hand me a sample of the fuel. As I said, oh, is there anything I can take? And as he took it off his shelf and passed it to me, having just told me it seems to destroy containers, it actually fell apart onto his desk. And so that material was then put in another container. And that's where I saw my first strange radiation tracks in the middle of 2017, both on plastic, large format film, and in the sensor on a Logitech 9C. Anyway, I'm going to measure this, so we'll tear it again. And this will give us our weight of our container here. So that is 9.2 grams, 9.1, 9.2 grams. We'll take that off. We'll measure this container, okay? All right. And I know that this is fill level to the brim. So that is 99 grams, so 99.1. So the contents of that container is about 90 grams, okay? And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this container and fill it to the brim. So if I open it up, I know that this container is full to the level top, like there. So I'm gonna fill that up with water and we'll measure the container filled with water and that will tell us how many cc's the container is and then we will know the weight of the sand from that beach. So here it is and this has obviously got a different refractive index now it's got the water in there so we will tear that and we will see how heavy the water is and this is an ordinary water. So that is 44 grams. So the if it's 9.12 from that, uh, that's going to be about 35-ish grams of water. And in here, we have 
roughly 90 grams of sand. So that is more than double the weight. So if I put that on there, you can see. Okay, so that should give us the mass uh, volume relationship. And so we shall have a, a way of uh, saying this is obviously heavier than many other elements uh, that could fill that same volume. And so that was very interesting. So thank you very much for your time and I will see you in the next video.